over a thousand pound for a wing and look we've got a lot of rust on it the whole bottom of the wing is gone i'm going to make a piece out of this with very very basic tools with me welder as you can see, the car is only halfway in a garage. Not perfect conditions, not my garage. I haven't got all my tools, but we're gonna do it. Hello, and welcome to another budget and Lego video. We're gonna use my Transteel 2200 Fronius welder, which is just an absolute animal. And we got this BMW wing to repair. So, it's over a grand to buy a new one. And the wing is in fairly good shape. There's a few little spots here and there, but nothing, nothing major. Um, we can completely build a new section without having to buy one. What I'm gonna do first is you can see kind of the hole here, and then we've got a lot of damage at the bottom too. So what I'm gonna do even, even here, it's completely gone here too. So what I'm gonna do is, off camera, I'm gonna take off this bottom trim and I'm gonna take all the paint off and see exactly what we're dealing with. Because with rust, it's not what you can see, it's what you can't see, it's the problem. Always, always the problem. Never go off. Whatever hole you can see, quadruple it normally. And it's about what you really got. Did I forget to mention, this is the 1986 BMW 635 when BMW knew how to make engines. If you remember in an old, old video, I don't know how long ago it was now, um, this was overheating and I, re I put all new fans, clutches, everything in, thermostats, completely flush the system out and it's still going A1, no problem. But the old test has come around and we got some rust. All right, well, we managed to take it off and only breaking one clip, which was good. Um, I was trying to undo this bolt, and as you can see, the whole thing just came with me. Um, now, this is the issue with this. You can see all the crap that this is catching over the years, um, which is basically causing it to rust. Now, with modern, modern glues and stuff like that, you can actually glue these back on where the glue is a sealer as well to stop all this from happening. And then you can just use fishing wire to take it off. It's a lot better and easier than all these clips because to get these clips back on also can be a bit of a nightmare. You can, you can just hit them with your hand, but they can be a bit of a nightmare. Um, but you can just see the crap that, you just see the crap that it catches. Now, we're kind of really seeing the damage now. So what I've got to do is grind all that back and see exactly what we're left with. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna cut anything out. I'm gonna use this as my template and my panel, because you can see there's a quite a big step there. Um, and there's a channel that runs in there. So we've got a lot of kind of work to do. It's not just a straight panel. There's always a crown in the panel. So there's gonna be a crown that way and a crown that way. So it's not just a flat panel. Plus we've got this lip and radius here. So we've got the lip inside. If we get that wrong, the real arch line is going to look wrong. So there's a lot to think about, but you just take it one step at a time and we will get there. Yes, it might take a few days, a few hours, but we'll get there. Right, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to make this in a few sections. To try and make all this in one section, yes, it is possible, but where I am with the tools I've got, not really. You can see this whole section here is gone. The lip is gone here and it's completely gone inside here too. So, um, yeah, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna make this in a few sections. I'm gonna make this section first with no lip. I'm gonna weld the lip on separately. So I'm just gonna get this, this um, radius here and then weld the lip on afterwards. Then this kind of indentation dint here I'm gonna do that separately. And then this piece is gonna be one. I might even do this piece and these two bends in one, I'm not sure yet. But that's essentially how I'm gonna do it. Weld them all together, use this as my template. So I'm gonna keep get the metal. I'm gonna put up against here. I'm not gonna cut any of this out. And once I'm ready, once I've welded all my pieces together, once I've made the bottom section, put it to this and then at the same time, cut around it and weld it at the same time and then let, just let this piece fall out the side or fall out the bottom. That's the way I'm gonna do it. Because if I cut out all this now, I'm kind of lost and I won't really know the shape and I wanna keep 
this line here so I don't want to go into this I want to cut cut it about there to keep the original um, panel gap here and just make a new lip at the bottom so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to start cutting some metal measuring up once I've got a few bits kind of measured up and cut I'll show you exactly what I'm doing so I've cut my piece of steel now I'm actually using one mil cold rolled steel um, in a sheet form now I know some people might be thinking why don't you just cut a 90 degree bend or bend a 90 degree bend there as you can see it's not straight even this lip isn't straight there's a roll in it so I need to follow this angle and it's just easier with the tools that I've got and just showing you how to do it with no tools essentially we'll just add that lip in afterwards and I'll weld a seam down there grind it all off roll it nicely to get the rolled lip and you'll never know um, but you can see even here look that this isn't a flat panel this is a flat piece of steel but look there's a big roll on that if I put that flat at the bottom look how much gap is there so all I'm going to do is I, I before I mark anything I want to get the shape in this I want to get the nice crown in that I'm just going to use an old exhaust actually it's a new exhaust um, I'll show you. I'm just going to bend slowly put a slight bend in this slight crown because you can see it's flat just with an exhaust this is where a pipe anvil will just be a lot better I'm going to make one of them in another video but essentially I'm just I can't really do it one-handed I might be able to just put a slight can you see that it's kind of going and just get that to fit nice I'm going to do that off camera just by putting one hand and just slightly bending it and moving it on the uh, exhaust like that just to get a nice a nice crown in it to fit that then we're going to worry about the crown because I don't know if there's going to be no we're not too bad so we haven't really got a crown this way we've just got a crown up and down so let me do that first right now look at that you can see there's a slight curve in that and all I did one end just like that and my hands either end rolling it along because it actually rolls along because it's a flat piece and exhaust like that and now we'll see if I put it up look at that we're, we're, we're very, very close. I still need to do a bit of work, but we're very, very close. There's a slight little crease there. We're just going to knock that out. So just let me work this. Anyway, let me work that a little bit more just to get it to fit 100%. Right, there's my line. Just use some chalk. And what I did is I lined it up with the bottom lip of that. Now, I'm not going to use all this. I am going to cut most of that off. It's just when you make it too long and too big, if you have to move it, because you will have to move it, and um, it just gives you a little bit more rigor room and if you do make a slight mistake you've got plenty of material left you can always cut it down to final shape afterwards but as you can see from that line it just isn't flat and for you to try and roll a 90 degree lip on that which isn't flat either it's possible and yes you can actually do it with fairly cheap tools um, you can actually get like a, a solid round bar and cut a little slit in it and slowly work the metal um, I might show that if I can find a piece of round bar actually I will show that um, that I can make a slit in and make my yeah so I'll do that actually hopefully I can find the right uh, piece so that's that's my first line so what I need to do is maybe make a second line whatever thickness that is 10 mil or so I might make it 10 mil I can always cut it down and I can show you how to slowly bend that I'll do that actually I'm just gonna cut this line off here and then this is my lip here. Hopefully I can find something around here that I can do this with. Right, always keep your off cuts because it's amazing. Like that could make me my lip, a lot of the lip if I really needed to, as you can see. But anyway, um, so I've got that shape cut into it. And as you can see, you might think this is level, but when you put that up against it, you will now kind of see that, that that fits really, really nicely. Um, and the beauty thing about leaving it too long, let's say you slightly got it off, so you, you cut it here, for example, you can twist this up, look, and you've still got plenty of material to, to play with. But what I'm going to do is, I've marked my second line in there, and this is the tool I made. Very, very simple, just a bit of rebar with a cut in it. Now, you do have to be careful. Uh, you want to make the cut exactly the thickness of the lip you want. When you go kind of past 10 mil, it can be a little bit awkward. Um, I should be hopefully be able to bend this by hand without putting it in a vise but sometimes it is easier to put say a couple of pieces of wood or something one either side and put it in a vise just so it holds most of it and then you can bend that lip round. I'm going to try it first with what well, actually uh, can I do it I don't know 
I'm going to struggle to film this and do it at the same time. Let me see what I can do. That blew my eyes off. Right. So essentially all you do is put this down on it. Make sure... Why won't that go in there? Come on. Make sure it's completely down. Make sure you get the bend the right way and very, very slowly just work your way down and start bending. Now you can actually see there, look. See what I'm doing? And you can see the bend it makes. I'm going to maybe have to go up and down this maybe three or four times. Don't try and bend it 90 degrees first because you're just, you're just not going to do it, especially with a bend this big. And you overlap the bend halfway. I am struggling to try and do this on camera. Make sure you go all the way down because that's if you don't go all the way down on each, each bend, you're going to kind of get into trouble. But you can kind of see what I'm doing there and you can see the form it's taken. If you make this slip too big, you can always cut it off afterwards. Always best to make it too big than too small, obviously. Um, but very, very slowly, I'm just going to work my way down. Might not look great at first, but you work your way down, up and down a few times. Just let me get that done a few times. I'll turn the camera back on and I'll show you just what it can do. We're not there yet, but look at that. That was about five or six times up and down. The line isn't quite there yet, but once I do it maybe another five or six times, we'll have our bend and we'll test fit it. We might have to work it a little bit with the hammer, but that's not a big deal. But you can see, now you can see the shape of it. You know, it's, it's, just, it's just not straight by any stretch of the imagination. Do you know, look at, the, look at the angles in it. That's why, if you don't do it this way, you can just add this piece afterwards once you've got this curve right here. Just add this piece afterwards and weld it on. But, like I said, very, very simple tool. Nothing to it. Right, the shape was kind of going way away from me. Now you can see, look, it's a lot more uniform. Still not 100% there yet, but I'm getting there. And basically, all I did to get it back, I used this solid bar of a wheel off a lawnmower. And I just got my hammer, and I was just hammering it along there, turning it around. And doing the same thing. That's all I've done. And I get out of the sun. You can start seeing this shape appearing very, very nicely. It does take time, but with ball pin hammers, solid round bar, a piece of that, and I'm making this shape. I'm really, really close now. You can kind of see that. Nice rolled edge, nice shape. I just got to trim this down even now. Um, the metal might move on you slightly once you do that rolled lip. So let's just put it back. Yeah, look, you can see it's slightly moved on me. So all I'm going to do is put it back on the exhaust pipe and just bend it to the shape I need. But now, quite quickly, as you can see, once we line that at the bottom, we've got our lip. Just need to um, bend this back. Line it up with this. I'm going to cut it, say, well, not yet, but I will eventually say cut it maybe to something like that. It might look funny at the minute, but you've got to remember this. Once I cut this panel out of the way, it's going to be pushed back. So don't worry about that. But as you can see, it's a nice fit. Um, it's a nice lip. So we're going to cut some metal now and we're going to make this little, this little piece here. And then this piece and then start welding them together and i'm gonna have to kind of guess the line coming down here because i've just got nothing to work on so i'm gonna kind of have to guess following on from this line to where it should be which is going to be a little bit awkward but look we'll get there right okay rather than making this in two sections i'm going to make this indentation and this in one section with this piece of steel here. So I've got my protractor, just measured the actual gap where it's bent in, and I've marked it on my sheet there. So all I need to do now is either find something or make something that this is this kind of shape. I've got my line there. I'm gonna pull it in the vise and just hit whatever I happen to find. So I might even use this, I don't know yet. I might have to slightly shape this goes in there put that in the vise or just open the vise not put it in the vise and just with this hit across that line to make that indentation and uh, 
then this piece will be one and then what I can do is weld this piece to that piece and then all we got to do is make the two 90 bends then um, but I will have to once I've done that make the shape and make the return lip into this so thinking about it I might make the return lip now and then do the shape after so that's what I think I'll do so I'm gonna have to kind of now line this up with that make kind of guess the shape or I might try and trace from the other side that's not gone trace the shape into here and then once I put the bend in then I can put the line in because the bend will give it a bit more strength as well and I can put the line in all the way across for the bead that goes all the way across so let me just I'm gonna do exactly the same thing again as I did that I'm gonna mark this up do my uh, I think I did six or seven mil uh, of a space and then bend it with this tool same again get the shape right put them together to make sure it kind of looks right and then I'll show you putting that that groove in it after. you look at this side we've got the angle here and then it goes kind of flat here there's not much really of an angle all the angles kind of here but I did copy that now make sure when you copy that you have to reverse it for the other side don't follow the same line because otherwise it'll be off so here's the piece slight line to it but nothing too much let me get both of these on and I'll kind of I'll try and show you what they look like now now I've still got a small bit of fettling to do at the top um, you can just see it slightly off there but the line is good and look it comes all the way down to there and we've got the return lip now all I need to do is put the line into this piece here and then once I've done that I'm gonna make that top piece good and then I can weld these two together cut off the cut off what I don't need and then I have one piece and I've just got an, one more piece to make and then we've got our bottom of a wing done it's gonna look a lot better in a few minutes well maybe an hour or so we'll shrink in a little bit that's why I made this longer so when this pulls in a little bit I've still got plenty to weld to the um, to the top piece so let me show you that right, I wasn't happy how this was working so I had to look around again and I saw this on the back of my vice and I was like oh that's nice I put that on top put the piece of metal like that then I'll show you now look. did that put that piece of metal on top and started hitting it and I got I've still got to do a bit of messing with it but look at that shape now that is very very close to the shape I need now when you do work metal you do tend to kind of warp it a little bit so I'm gonna to have to bend that back in but all I got to do is this top lip I've got to bend that top lip a little bit more but once I put this on the car now in a few seconds it's actually really close all right so when I put it up you can see look it's really really close all I got to do is this top lip I've got to bend this top lip up more and this bottom edge here I've just got to slightly soften this bottom edge just to make it not as sharp just to more or less roll rather than kind of be sharp there and then that is going to be lovely so straighten the top edge up slightly make this ridge slightly less sharp and then that's going to be lovely All right we are getting there we're quite close now look at the look at the shape i've got there i've got the nice curve and i've also got my groove cut into it again it's too long but that's not a problem when i put it up against here look at can you see that look at the shape we've got look at that absolutely perfect and when i more or less put it in place which is more or less about here i think look at that absolutely perfect we've got the line we've got the shape we just need to obviously cut loads off it and once they're together like that you can see the line of the arch that we've got obviously there's a that slightly kinked in so that would lift up slightly like that and that would go in behind it so now all i've got to make is this bit but i can't make that bit until i get some self tappers and screw that onto here so i can line up the bottom piece and tack weld them together and finish that off completely so it's one piece and then before i go cutting and before look at that that shape was just made with the exhaust a vice and a ball pin hammer completely the wrong hammer 
for this type of work. Um, but it just goes to show you can do it. So yeah, I need to I need to screw this panel on in here because again, I'm only going to be using maybe this much of the panel, um, just kind of maybe up to there because this actually is quite good. The rust is up to there, so I'm going to have to use on the bottom panel. I'm going to have to come to here. But once I've got these two welded together, um, I can then because obviously when you weld, they slightly warp and stuff like that. Even though you can, you know, you you, you can kind of stop the warpage but not too much you know you're going to always get a little bit but i can i can mess with that i can i can get the shape back get the shape perfect again and then do the bottom and then uh, i'll show you the way i i actually weld the panels together and cut all that out at the same time um so yeah i just need some self-tapping screws which i don't think i have with me right each to their own this is just the way i prefer to do it I would have preferred slightly smaller self-tappers or even my Clecos, but I just don't have them with me. Now, you can see this is our line, which is absolutely perfect. The reason why I personally like to keep the old panel, because when you go here, look, see, I'm lining up exactly with the old panel. So I now know that this is definitely in the right position. You can see that. I've got to settle this a little bit because of the gap, but I'm not worried about the gap. I always like to leave at least a one mil gap because butt welding, I see a lot of people do it. They butt weld two pieces of metal together. They weld them and they grind all the weld off. Well, you're grinding 99.8% of the weld off. If you leave a little gap, you're, the gap that you've left, the weld will sink into. When you grind it flush, you've still got the thickness of the gap. But what I'm going to do with this, because there's a slight rolled edge on this, see I just need to twist this, there's nothing to screw to on the bottom, it's just completely rusty, so it's a bit of a nightmare. But I'm going to tack weld the outside of it, fully tack weld it, so just spot it, spot it, spot it. Fully weld the inside of it for, for basically strength, and then I'm going to round the outside of it, and the welding behind is going to be the strength, and I can get a nice rolled edge by, by rolling the weld more so than trying to to roll the metal so you can see we've got a gap all the way across there it's it's about a mil and just over a mil in some parts but i'm not worried about that um, and also when you see metal on on camera it might look twisted and distorted because the way the grinders may be run but believe me this is nice and flat it's just when you see you you if you watch videos and i've seen it even when i'm doing it that, the metal looks like it's twisted and warped. It's just the way that the, the grinder marks or just whatever marks you just happen to put in it. But basically, we get in there now. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to do this bit later. You can see it's too long, but I'm not worried about it being too long because I'm going to cut it and trim it afterwards. I need to cut and trim all this. So I'm not worried about that yet. I just want to get that now tack welded, welded from the inside, completely finished, and then... I can worry about making the bottom piece, do that, weld all that together to make it one piece, then cut it exactly to the length I need, which I'm going to cut it on the car, so I'm going to show you how I do that too, to the exact length I need, and then, then the panel is done. Um, it really is as simple as that, but you can see very, very basic tools, exhaust pipe, hammer, and a vice. <laughs> Um, very very simple. Right, I got my awesome Feronius welder set up and for those of you who don't know, haven't seen my other videos on this thing, it is unbelievable. This synergy mode is brilliant. So I put what, what uh, wire I've got in, I've put what thickness of wire I've got in and I've put what gas I'm using. That's it. Now all I do, this is one mil, so it's on one mil. If I want to weld one and a half mil, bang, there we go. I want to weld two mil, bang, two and a half bang three bang automatically does it i don't have to do anything um absolutely unbelievable and it's as quick as that to do it the awesome thing about this welder is 13 now don't get me wrong when i have it in my place yes i have a 16 amp plug on it but i'm running on a 13 amp plug with an extension lead look see and still absolutely perfect it's got a very it's got a brilliant soft start on it so uh that's why I, that's why i went for this one yes you don't need as an expensive welder as this but at the end of the day you get what you pay for now here's the issue i'm having i'm welding in a garage with the door open and the wind 
typically enough today is coming this way unbelievable anyway so all i'm doing is i'm just tacking it across and i'm going to tack it all across you want to leave it maybe about an inch between each weld and then come back and weld you can blow the airline you, you're not going to be able to run a line of a bead of weld around this it's just going to warp it so just load of spots join them together and once you grind them down it's going to be nice and flat now you can see i'm getting there still got a few little spots to do but it's essentially one panel now you can see we've still got a nice groove in there there's a few still once you uh, weld it you, you do have to maybe go over it a couple of times just to get all the little spots but it's welded inside it's nice and strong what i'm going to do now is i just want to trim this bottom piece up because it's too long and it's sticking below here so i want to get this line so i can make the final part and weld the final part onto it then i can worry about cutting this off the top Welding the holes I've made, welding the holes up in here, and now I'm most of them I'm not going to be welding up that hogs, I'm going to be cutting that off. And uh, yeah, but we're getting there, you can see, it's nice, we're getting there. It's just a uh, couple more spots of weld, a couple of cuts, I'm just going to cut this off camera, make one more piece, weld it together, and then we have our repair section. Okay, I've got the panel on, I've cut it off, now hopefully, let's just get down here oh god fingers in the way now you can really see this line coming into play i've got a few little spots of weld to finish but what i gotta do now is i gotta do this lip that comes straight and has a 90 degree bend because this bottom of the bump as you can see or bottom of the wing it's just completely missing so i've got to come put new screws in it as well because this is what's this part of the bumper now bumper this part of the wing is what's going to be bolted to the car so as soon as, as soon as this comes off this wing is going to be flapping so once i weld to here and bolt to there that's what um fits uh, fixes it onto the car i can't bloody speak so yeah i'm just going to measure that and make a 90 degree bend this should be fairly straightforward now there's, there's this is this is straight all the jacking brackets are up here so i don't have to do any strengthening down here it's just whatever two and you know 50 60 mil and maybe 20 mil uh, lip and weld it across to there so there's nothing really special there there's going to be no well there'll be nothing special there so once i've got that done i will show you what it looks like right i had a look again underneath and it's a little bit more complicated than i thought so what i have done in the past and it's worked really well get a piece of off-cut steel which is just here and make yourself a little template now that is the shape i need camera really focus look at that so it's not i thought it was completely straight with just a 90 degree bend it isn't there's a there's a crown in it and a fairly steep curve at the end so now when i go under here this now fits look at that see that that now fits perfectly so i now need to make a bigger version of this to go all the way across but you can see now look that will go underneath there that'll get my rolled edge at the top so i'm going to weld across there also i'm going to weld inside so when i grind the weld this side it's the weld in the inside that's really doing the support but i just need to make this this piece now all the way across the bottom and then weld it together and then cut off what we don't need and weld it back on properly sorted got my piece of metal here and as you can see i've scribed a line into it so i've measured the lip of the car with the calipers just scribe the line into it that's where i'm going to do my first 90 degree bend then what i have to do is i have to put a lip on the end for the wing because the whole side of the wheel arch has got a slight little lip not where it bends it fades off to the lip but i do the 90 degree bend then i'll cut a little slot in it and i'll bend my lip back and just chamfer it so it, it comes quite high and as it goes to the top it chamfers off and then i can put my roll in it um because it's just a slight roll and yes with the bend on will make it a little bit harder but because i have to cut this put a little slit in here it's going to roll quite easily so i'm just going to stick this in the vise and do my 90 degree bend first we got our piece made now when i looked at the other side i've still got a chamfer this off coming down to an angle and weld up this corner but the other side had a rolled lip of a rolled edge so I'm just going to cut that off there and weld it and blend it in so you won't see it. But we've got the nice shape we need. The way I did it, very simple. 
got this tool again, the bit of rebar, vice grips and the piece of metal to there and just hit it with a hammer and rolled it across the top. I don't know what this is off, the customer had this lying around, um, but that's all I did. And now, when we come under here, I do this, look at, look at that. So once I weld that all the way across there, we've got our, I'm blending our old edges there. We have our repair section, see that? So all I've got to do now is, a couple of uh, self tappers through here, I've, I had to grind off them because they were sticking out and causing me an issue. So I'm going to put two self tappers through this where I'm going to re-drill the new bolt holes. So then I don't have to do any welding on here or on here, just make the holes bigger. But that will that will stick it into place while I weld this. Then I can take it off, weld it front and back properly, round my edge off. And then we can actually cut this panel to the size we need and start welding it to the car. So we're getting there and we're quite close. And obviously, look, it's gonna it's gonna take all that away. Which is going to be nice. I think there's actually supposed to be maybe another bolt here. I can't see there just being two bolts and this left open. So this bolt's completely gone. But again, we'll sort that out. At least that's not actually rusty in there. But I have to clean all that. That's just crap. So yeah. I just started grinding and I realised I just wanted to show you. So there's just loads of little spots. It never looks nice because it's just spot after spot. But you weld about every inch every 25 30 mil and then just go back another spot another spot another spot slowly join them all up together grind them back and you're going to have to go through a few little spots again grind it back and then you get your final finish right you can see all the crap that's coming off it now i've just cut the bottom off so the wing is essentially now free at the bottom as you can see i've got my line here so i've i've, I've shaped the panel what i would normally do is I would put my panel over the top and I would weld, just spot weld it. Then I come in with the grinder and I cut, I cut through both panels at once and then I weld my panel to the old panel flush and then I remove the old section. But because I can't remove this old section once my panel's on top, what I'm gonna have to do is come just on about a millimetre to this line cut it off as i make my cut what will happen is it'll just cut through the last millimeter of the panel which will just basically turn into dust it's not going to be there i just find it a lot easier that way because if you try and weld if, if i cut this out now and try and weld the panel to it flush it, it has a tendency to push in push out and do absolutely everything when i keep it flat to the panel and spot weld it and cut the spot welds off a couple of inches at the time and then put my panel to the old panel weld it it just it keeps it in place a lot easier i'll show you once i get it on it'll make a lot more sense but all i'm going to do now is just cut this off just below that line right now look you can see just how bad it is with all the build up but lucky enough the internal structure is absolutely perfect it's just the wing or what's left of the wing so the internal seal is perfect but you can just see how bad oh i still need to chop that off at the bottom you just see how bad it is okay so this is what i've done and like i said lucky enough we're all good inside there now i have taken this properly down because if i leave that on the panel's going to stick out and also stick out forward this way i need the panel to go down and in on the corner so you can see my line here the other good reason for doing this because i'm following the curve of my panel and cutting this panel at the same time I can actually, you know, cut any direction I want and get the perfect join. Where if you cut this and you're slightly off on your line, it's not going to line up very well on your panel. And the one mil cutting disc gives you a lovely one mil gap, which is what I prefer. So, this is the panel. As you can see now, look at that. Look how good that panel is there, look. All right? So that panel's lined up perfectly. Then, I'm going to weld spot weld my panel onto the old onto the car panel just maybe you know once one spot every inch and then after i've done that 
and then going to cut through the spot welds and cut through the panel at the same time that will push the panel that will push both panels together and makes them smooth then i do all my spot welds grind it off and it's one smooth panel and then all i have to do is i've got enough room because otherwise i would take more of this out this will just drop down outside and fall off if i was to cut that off straight away if i didn't match it exactly with that line i'm going to have a bigger gap and uh, the panel tends to to want to pull in and pull out where when i weld it to this it will keep it flat for me which is just i'll show you once i once i get everything set up for I got the panel on and as you can see look nicely 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 all lines up I sprayed some etch primer on it so you had some stuff in the garage and it just started reacting so I can clean that up a lot easier once it's on the car because I've got something to work against but now as you can see with the bit I've cut away this is really flush so I'm gonna weld maybe well every inch one spot weld every inch I cut a little bit too much off there but that's not a big deal I can I can sort that out and then you'll see what I mean by cutting it just before I weld it just look at how tight that panel fits to there see how nice and tight it is which is what you want because now you know you've got the right shape and when you cut the old wing away you know it's going to be perfect now the biggest thing I've been fighting with is this wind coming in here and it's just blowing the gas off the welder so hopefully now it's going to make a lot more sense. I've just spot welded it to here. And as you can see, I've cut through, as you can see, I've cut through a couple of them. And that now makes the panel flat. Here there's a huge lip. But now here, the panel is flat. So I now I'm going to spot weld here, here and here. Recut this, let that panel fall in. Spot weld again, recut it, spot weld again until I've done this complete panel. It's nice and flat. Then I can go and completely do the spot welds and grind it off. That panel then will just fall to the back and be nice and flush. So hopefully now you can really see what I, I don't know why I did it because I know I shouldn't really do curves. I should have just done a straight line up and down because it's just a bit easier. But you get the idea. So here we go. Look, there's a big gap there, but look at that completely flush so now I just go over the spot welds I've cut through cut through more and then I know it's completely flush I've just got to push it back in but there you go because I took the bias scripts off the back but it's as easy as that your cut then matches exactly your panel and your panel is exactly flat if you was to try and cut it once like i explained before the panels going in and out and it's just so much harder to control a lot lot easier to control now right and there we go now look at that look how smooth that is across there absolutely perfect what i've got to do now is just spot weld it completely and grind it this line is still absolutely perfect even there same again look there's no steps there's no nothing nothing's twisted because i'm going slow and that's essentially how you do it now i'll be doing a lot more of this work on the citroen cx that i will be um completely restoring i'm kind of running out of time now and i'll do separate videos on paint and preparation and stuff like that but this just goes to show you how easily you can make a panel yes it does take time like everything but as you can see when you look down there now you look in there we've got the line we've got the shape coming down we've got absolutely everything just going to weld it and grind it no point you seeing that but that's it so as always look hope it helps please like share comment and subscribe don't forget links up here links down below but most important don't forget get your hands dirty see you for the next one sorted right yes i know the color is way off but this is just to get it passed through a test and to take the bad luck off it and we are going to be mostly doing a full respray on this car the camera is making the color look a lot worse than what it is but it is still off but as you can see now it's all done 
and uh, ready to go put the strip back on and then in a few months time most probably do a full respray on it but at least the panel now it just looks like it's the wrong color it doesn't look like it's been replaced <laughs> 